Today, we're going to look at using VST instruments and effects inside Reason. If you've been making music with Reason for a while, you know how monumental of a change that is. But here's the coolest part. It's really no change at all. Bringing VSTs into Reason's rack instead invites them to join in on everything we've always loved about Reason's quick creativity, flexibility, and endless possibility, allowing you to now get all the sounds you want and even making music with VSTs in ways only possible in Reason's modular rack. The best way to show you what I mean is to make a song together using all of Reason's rack device types from Reason devices, rack extensions, players, and now VST instruments and effects too. In order to stay focused on the new VST techniques in this video, we'll move more swiftly through the Reason tricks and devices we've covered in other videos. VSTs come in all shapes and sizes and are designed for every stage of the creative process. Founder and CEO of Output, Greg Lehrman, likes to focus their instruments on the initial spark of creativity. We always start with what is a product that you can sit down and start a track with. Anybody who makes music should be able to find inspiration and creativity, and that's really where we start. So let's do exactly that, by starting our idea with some of their instruments. VST instruments or effects you've installed on your computer will show up in Reason's browser alongside built-in rack devices and rack extensions. Outputs sound libraries run inside the Native Instruments contact player, which currently appears in our browser using a default VST logo. This is how VSTs will look when first installed. Let's drag the contact player into the rack, and what loads is Reason's new plug-in rack device, which houses our VST plugins. Initially, the plug-in rack device is very straightforward. We have a patch browser for any plugins that use standard FXB and FXP patches, pitch and mod wheels, and a display screen also currently showing a default VST label. To open the contact player plugin window, we simply click anywhere on the plugin rack device's glass display. Let's load outputs analog strings, which has some great string and synthesizer hybrid sounds. Pluck sounds are a great way to start song ideas, so we'll use this one. But before we close our plugin window and get on with the music, let's first bring our attention to the buttons at the top of the plugin window, particularly the screenshot button. Back when we scrolled to the contact player in our browser, the VST displayed a default logo. If we click the screenshot button and close our plugin window, you can see that we now have a device thumbnail displayed in our browser alongside our other rack devices. It's also displayed on the plugin rack device's front panel. Once you take a screenshot of your VST, it will appear in all new song documents going forward. If you've gotten to know Reason's players, you already know how great they are for writing and exploring new musical phrases. Players work with VST instruments the same way they do for everything else in the Reason rack. I'm going to do one of my favorite note echo tricks by creating wide parallel harmony notes, which I'll then fit into my song's key by dragging in a scales and chords player. The result of these players, with outputs analog strings, is a super fun pluck sound that I can explore and record. Let's add to this idea with another output library perfectly suited to modern sounding hooks, Exhale. You're now familiar with the process. We'll drag the same contact player into the rack, open it up, and load an Exhale preset. Exhale is an instrument which maps vocal loops and slices across the keyboard, so we can create our own juggled sample parts, like this. But sound design and creative production isn't limited to just what the VST plugin itself can do. We can process VST plugins in our rack just like we would process any rack device. If I wanted to run this vocal hook through a rack extension filter, I just drag it in below and it cables itself to our plug-in rack device. I'll draw in a little filter automation and suddenly we've got a song building. But of course, Reason sequencer automation like this isn't limited to rack extensions. We can automate VST plugin parameters using the sequencer too. To demonstrate, let's add another VST instrument to our song. Serum by X4 Records is a highly popular synthesizer, championed by producers of EDM, trap, pop, and seemingly every other genre these days. Let's record a part for our song.
If we wanted to automate Serum's built-in filter, we have three options. We could of course just click record in our sequencer and start adjusting the filter cutoff on Serum. Our automation is captured perfectly in the sequencer. If you prefer to draw automation points by hand, you can instead use the automation button atop the plugin window. Click it once to activate it, and now click the parameter you want to automate. In this case, that's filter cutoff. Once clicked, a filter cutoff automation lane appears in the sequencer, ready for you to draw in automation points. In the third method, if you like to work with control surfaces, you can assign VST plugin parameters to your control surface using the remote button and a similar process. This time, click the remote button to activate the assignment process. Then click the parameter you want to control. Reasons Edit Remote window pops up, where you can choose your controller and which knob or fader it will adjust on the plugin's filter cutoff. Now we can record automation using our controller. To those of you who make music using the front of Reason's Rack, automate sounds via the sequencer, and play instruments using controllers, congratulations. You've learned everything you need to learn about the plug-in rack device and using VSTs in Reason. Now to those of you who like to dive deeper into Reason's advanced world of CV modular routing in the back of the rack, let's take a tour of how the plug-in rack device brings Reason's CV magic to VST plugins. I'll search my instruments in the browser for Dune 2 by Synapse Audio. If you know and love the Antidote Rack Extension, also by Synapse Audio, Dune 2's sounds won't disappoint. To sequence Dune 2, let's bring in the chord sequencer by Electric Panda and load one of its pattern presets. We connect the chord sequencer to our Dune 2 VST plugin by flipping the back of Reason's Rack using the Tab key. We can drag cables from chords gate and note CV outputs to the plugin rack device's gate and CV inputs. Now if I play some chords, the chord sequencer generates a pattern from those incoming notes to send to our VST instrument. I can even drag a scales and chords player above the chord sequencer to convert single notes on my keyboard into colorful chord patterns. One cool thing about Chord Sequencer and Routing in Reasons Rack in general is that one device can control many things. Chord Sequencer has several gate and CV outputs and several pattern lanes. That means that if I were to drag another VST instrument like Synthmaster 1 and load a patch, I could also connect it to the Chord Sequencer using the same technique. This time, it's the second set of gate and note CV cables that'll go to Synthmaster 1's gate and CV input. I can now program the second pattern lane, which will use the same incoming chords to generate a bass line. With our other VST instruments and the drums I've programmed in Kong, we've got something of a tropical house vibe going on here. We'll round out this song idea with a top line synth melody. I know we've been focusing purposely on VST instruments so far in this tutorial, but there are some fantastic sounding rack extension instruments and effects for reason, and Blamsoft's Expanse is one great example. Let's record a line. To process this sound a bit further, let's bring a VST audio effect into our signal chain by dragging a FabFilter Pro-Q2 beneath Expanse and clicking its thumbnail to open it. FabFilter is an EQ plugin typically used in mixing and mastering. Thanks to its built-in spectrum visualizer and up to 24 bands of EQ that go from subtle to surgical, we can easily set up a custom bandpass style filter using the Pro-Q2. But one thing we can't easily do inside the plugin itself is to sweep these five EQ bands as a group, and certainly not in a musical or rhythmic way. This is a perfect job for the plugin rack device's CV programmer. You may recognize this style of modulation routing from Reason's Thor synthesizer or many other plugins which use a similar method to set up modulation control. Our first step is to teach the plugin rack device which parameter inside the VST we want to control. We do that with the Learn button. 
I'll click Learn on the CV parameter's first row and our Fab Filter pops up, where I can select the first EQ band and click its frequency knob. You can see that our CV programmer has assigned our first parameter correctly to band 1's frequency. Since we have five bands, we just need to do that a few more times for EQ band 2, 3, and so on. You'll notice each row in the CV programmer now displays the correct EQ band and also its base value. This base value represents where the VST plugin's parameter is currently set. If I lower the base value of band 1 frequency on our CV programmer, you'll see the plugin follow along. And it works both ways, too. If I adjust the EQ band in the plugin itself, you'll see the base value update to reflect the new position. I want to control all of these bands with just one CV signal. I could use any number of Reason Devices or Rack extensions to do this, but let's use the Matrix Pattern Sequencer. I'll drag it beneath my plug-in rack device while holding down Shift, flip the rack, and drag a cable from the Matrix's Curve CV to Modulation CV Input 1 on the plug-in rack device. If we return to the front of the rack, you'll notice that by default, each row of the CV programmer is set to an incrementally higher CV input jack but we can reassign all five of our EQ bands to be controlled by the single CV cable we've connected to CV input 1. Let's switch our matrix to curve edit mode and draw in some stepped CV values. When we press play now, the matrix pattern sequencer sends these values to our plugin rack device, where the CV programmer then routes them to our plugin's EQ bands. The result is that our matrix pattern sequencer is moving all five bands of our EQ simultaneously, and most importantly, musically to our beat. If we want to scale back the range of the modulation signal, we can do that with the amount slider in each parameter row. If I adjust them all downward to the same value, our sweeping movement continues in lockstep, but you can see we've narrowed the range of that sweeping. As deep as we went today, we've only scratched the surface of what can happen when you combine the sounds from VST instruments or effects with the creativity of Reason's rack devices and rack extension plugins. From here, though, it's up to you to see which VSTs inspire you, what new sounds they can make with your rack extensions, and just where your music might go. So have fun.